Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our NFL Week 3 review. We are just going to jump right into it tonight, since it's actually late here tonight that we are doing this. But we'll start with our Thursday night game with the Panthers at the Texans. I think Simon Donald just went off again on him. <laughs> actually, kind of a closer game than expected. It wasn't a... It wasn't a very high scoring game until the fourth quarter. Sam Darnold did look pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, Chris McCaffrey still battling some injuries, taken out um, early in the game with a hamstring problem. Uh, defensively, they looked really good. Um, Texans, looking like the Texans that people thought they were going to be like, especially losing Tyrod Taylor the week before. Um, great win by Carolina uh, to continue uh, their, four, their 3 0 start right now. Uh, much prayers to Christian McCaffrey for a healthy recovery. Panthers do will will need to rely on him a lot going into the the season further down the road. So yeah, hopefully he can get back soon. Yeah, because they could really use him. He's always been a great weapon for him since they drafted him. Oh, absolutely, a very gifted athlete, and just unfortunate injury problems have plagued him through most of his career. Okay, moving on to our next game, a game that. I think actually frustrated a lot of the fan base. Seattle had Viking. Honestly, I think honestly the best thing that we had was probably our first drive that got us a touchdown. After that, we just went. Pace poor performance, to be honest. Um, nothing more that could be said about that. Um, offensively, they looked really good in the first two drives with scoring um, early, early with DK Metcalf getting him involved in the first series. And then Chris Carson getting a run and everything like that. But defensively, they really did not have an answer for Madison and Kirk Cousins, um, as you see on the stat board. Uh, Panthers kind of ruled the, the stat line. Vikings. Vikings, my bad. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you know, just a great performance by Vikings, um, and especially Cousins and Jefferson really tearing apart the end feel and actually he was a big threat as well um Madison getting the start over the injured uh Dalvin Cook with him being out and putting up 112 yards so like I said just an overall great performance by the Vikings in a real kind of piss poor performance by Seattle this week um will need to bounce back especially with the division game against San Francisco coming up uh this week and hopefully they can bounce back but they really need to as uh, the division is kind of, they could it could run away very soon. I agree. Well, and I'm not going to hold any punches either. I mean, like I said, very, very just not good after, like, the first drive at all. And as I keep saying this, Kenny Norton Jr., I love you, man, but you got to figure something out because right now the fan base is out there is actually, like, calling for you to be fired right now and – so I, think, I mean, I'm I know he'll probably try to figure it out, but it's just the soft defense, that we, soft zone defense that we keep seeing, and then sending Jamal Adams on blitzes. I just feel it's just been ruining us. It's not like Seattle type of defense that we're to the end. So, but not I I'm not I'm gonna kind of counteract that one. It needs to stop being all the blame on Ken Norton Jr. and more blame on the players. His poor performance on the players end. Horrible tackling schemes. They, you know, they they go for the that? hit. They go. They don't go for the tackle. They go for a yeah. shoulder hit or a strip. Yeah. So you know, I I'm, I'm gonna say this. Defensive coordinators have a little bit harder job because they they have a they have a they have to play, play everything off of the what they see, but ultimately what I saw was actually not piss poor zone play. It was piss poor just defensive play. You know, Jamal Adams and Trey and Andre Diggs were shoulder checking people, you know, and then they're biting each other's heads off and stuff like that. So, realistically speaking, it came down to not just the defensive coordinator, but it came down more to the defensive players that you play and offensive players. They couldn't block, they couldn't run the routes, there's no one catching. You know, um, Wilson had some good reads and had some bad reads. So, frankly, um, not to really argue with you on that, but. As a perspective, no. you gotta just look at this. It was more so just piss, piss poor defensive players out there. You know, 
Defense line did their best. Bobby, he needs, you know, Bobby Wagner needs to attack more. You know, he's waiting for it. He's 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 welcoming blocks and everything like that. But he's not shedding them. He's not getting tackles. You know, we have we're not really good on the linebacker core right now with the loss of KJ Wright and then Jordan Brooks also getting hurt. They're 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 trying to find their image and they they as a whole need to do it. Not just not just Ken Norman, but the players as well have to find it together and actually play together. Because you can run any scheme on anything. You just have to make it work. Right. And that's the biggest problem is that they 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 want they think it's the coaching scheme is not making it work, but the players have to do it. Right. And so if they're and they're making their own reads or stuff like that, and really in my opinion, it's just piss poor tackling. You know, seeing on you know, we're gonna talk about this play just a little bit more. I actually have a question for you. Do you think we need to start seeing some changes on the defense then for these guys with these poor performances? Yes. Absolutely. I don't know why, um and someone can probably figure this out for me. We traded for Sidney Jones, who is a better cornerback than Trey Flowers. Why are we? Why haven't we seen him in yet? Trey is obviously not performing well, and you can make any excuse all you want about it. But the fact is that we've watched him for three years now, and he has not performed up to par of whatever we're thinking. And yes, people need to stop comparing him to what Richard Sherman or Shaquille Griffin were. He's not that player. He needs to find his own rhythm, his own style, and everything like that. DJ Reed. Is probably our second best defender outside of you can't say Bob. You know you can't take it away from Bobby Wagner at this time. But in my opinion, like they need to figure out they need to figure out their identity. And the biggest thing for me is that they have to stop. You know if they want Jamal Adams to blitz, put him at linebacker so you can get another safety back there who can cover because he's not covering. He can't cover where the crap. You know, and my my opinion is that they they need to switch some things around. You know. It's not like it used to be with, you know, that could be the thing is that these guys are trying to be like they used to be because they have very similar styles of the Legion of Boom back in the day, but you can't. Those are just very gifted athletes. Right. So they need to find their own different style and maybe change up, maybe change up your depth and everything like that. And the biggest thing is, like, if you are putting so much trust in Trey Flowers and he's not handling it, guess what? It is what it is. Next man up. You traded for Sidney Jones. You, you traded a waste. You know stuff to get Sidney Jones, who was a better cornerback than Trey Flowers. Why hasn't he been in yet? Hurt? I don't know. That's a big question. Um, and then, you know, your biggest one that you that I don't see there's ever been a problem is the defensive line. They're actually performing very well and have always performed really well all year long. And like, you know, the biggest thing is you look at the Tennessee Titan game. You know, I remember watching Quandre Diggs get mad because Derrick Henry ran a touchdown. Son, you didn't even try to tackle him. <laughs> you didn't even bother. Like, he, I know he's a big dude, but you guys are all in the NFL for a reason, you know. And you have to just really man up and face him and take him head on. You might get trucked. That it is what it is. You could slow him down or maybe knock him out of bounds. So, right. You know, to me, I just think it's poor defensive plays playing. That's it, and they need to figure it out because it's it's kind of embarrassing. It really is kind of embarrassing. Like. They they barely got by um, Indianapolis. Had they had a better offense, had they had a healthy offensive line, Carson Wentz even healthy, they could have lost. They could have easily lost. They lost to Tennessee. They gave up on. They gave up a twenty. What was it? Twenty three to nine. Yeah. Lead at halftime, or yeah, twenty three twenty three to nine lead at halftime to lose thirty three to thirty in overtime, and then you just really came out really soft in this game. They need to figure everything out on defense, and Ken Norton needs to sit down with the defensive players. They all need to be on the same page, because um, I don't think like the zone coverage is bad. I just think that they're just not playing. They're not tough. They're not. They're not being aggressive like they used to be. Obviously, you can tell. But what we were just talking about, you know, being fans, we're a bit frustrated. We're frustrated. You know, one and two is not how we saw ourselves starting off the season this year. But you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, like I said, they can turn around. So, all that being said, let's move on to our next game. Because we can keep going on. You got me fired up, man. Oh, it's, I know. It's coaching. It's, you, it's coaching thing, man. It's it's a big thing. I, I used to, Like I said, I used to coach for so many years. Drives, it irks me. It drives me nuts. It drives me crazy. Okay. Like Britney Spears song. It drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, all right. Just can't sleep. All right. All right. Next up, we have Washington at the Bills. Kind of a bigger, bigger score again than I expected. I expected to be a little bit closer. Bills really bouncing back from their week one loss. 
and really looking like a like the contenders that they are that they have been. So great win by the Buffalo Bills. Solid effort by Washington. I just think that they're still figuring it out with. Obviously, their first choice of quarterback was not Heineke. It was definitely Fitzpatrick. So they're still learning. He's getting his foot in the door. But he's doing really well. And the defense is still very young and learning. But the Bills have built something very special there under uh, under their head coach and, go, and uh, having Josh Allen at the helm. So... Yep, very good all, like I say. It wasn't that big of a game uh, for the first quarter, and then the second quarter is actually where it actually blew open. But unfortunately, Washington getting the late touchdown in the fourth quarter didn't help them at all through this game. So good job, Bills, on getting that win. Next game, Bears at the Browns. This was... I listened to the... I listened to ESPN Radio the following morning, and I heard nothing about bad stuff that the analysts were talking about uh, with uh, Chicago. And, I mean, I didn't watch the game. Um, I did look at the stats, though, of the game, and, man, I'm, I can see where they were coming from. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously the Browns just put a whooping on them. Browns look like the Browns that I said in the beginning of the of these streams that I think that they're one of the top teams in the AFC. Um, defensively flying around Miles Garrett, setting a franchise record with four and a half sacks in a game. Justin Fields getting his first start in the NFL. Very rough start for him. Had a very, not a very strong game and um, definitely running for his life a lot. Really, it was just a dominant, dominant win by the Browns. Um, you know, they... They are two and one right now, um, after, you know, bouncing back from their week one loss to the Chiefs. They're out. For, they're out to prove something. They're out to fight something. They are, you know, looking for that revenge. Uh, first game back for Odell Beckham Jr. after his ACL tear from last season. Uh, great to see him out there. Um, honestly, the 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 Browns outside of having Jadavion Clowney because he's a bitch. Um, <laughs> I just don't like. <laughs> um, but the Browns are more as to me are more are a whole team in general. They are, um, they're built all around. So great win for them, and looking forward to see what they do, and looking to see if uh, Josh Justin Fields can maybe bounce back from this. Yeah, Browns definitely. You know, finally getting all those pieces put together for both sides of the ball, mm -hmm. and you know, as we were talking about, you know. Are they going to be a big contender here come to the end of the season for that division? I think it's looking that way. But, but, yeah, I think definitely next game, you know, Justin Fields will bounce back. Um, even Matt Nagy had come out and said, you know, we did not do a good job helping Justin prepare for this game. And, you know, hopefully, yeah, they can change that. Anyway, next game. Good game. Good defensive kind of game here. Uh, and... An amazing pick. Luck. Amazing last kick luck. of the game. Which, yeah, pretty much was luck. luck. <laughs> Not to discredit his kick and the 66-yarder for the win. But if you watch that kick, it bounced off the, the crossbar. Thankfully going in their air on the other side for the win. Could have easily gone other way. I know a lot of people will say, "Well, you're just not giving the kicker the credit." It hit the it hit the crossbar, people. Let's right. let's let's backtrack a little bit and say, "You you got blessed right there. <laughs> you got blessed." Uh, Lions putting up a great effort, looking for their first win. I think it's going to come very soon. Um, Lions being just an unfortunate program. Jared Goff getting traded there, and um, the the Ravens. Looking really good, but they need to need to continue to play a little bit better, in my opinion. They, uh, you know, last two games have been very close, down to the wire wins. So they need to kind of get the ball rolling a bit more, get that high powered offense going a little bit. I know that they've sustained a lot of running back uh, woes. Um, so they're a team that's going to be fighting this year. Uh, if you really think about it, all three of their games actually this year. I've either been in overtime or they uh, 
came down to the wire um, with their overtime loss to the Raiders week one and then the close win last week against the Chiefs and this close win. They they got to be very careful. They really do. Um, Lamar Jackson's got to step it up a little bit more. I know he's doing a lot, but he needs to be more of a, a quarterback than, a, you know, and get get you know get the ball rolling a little bit more and you know just be careful when you're running as much as he is because he could be looking at an injury possibly coming soon. Also, one thing to notice here as well, Lamar went 16 for 31, so kind of got. I obviously I didn't get to see this game or see the highlights, so it's either you know he was missing his passes or guys dropping balls. I do it doesn't show it on here, but he did throw one interception as well. So it's making you kind of wonder is what was going on there in this game. Was he just not, not, you know, his game throwing the ball all this time? Or so he just went to the run? Who knows? Um, I mean, I've always viewed Lamar Jackson as a gifted athlete. I wouldn't put him as a gifted quarterback. Because his mechanics and quarterback is still up in the air. And he needs to kind of tone that in a little bit more. And be more of a quarterback than an athlete because... Athletes can help you, but quarterbacks, you know, win the games. So he's got to figure, you know, he's got to continue being, developing more of that quarterback style and then and then, then just being the athlete. So he's got to build to be a quarterback. Than just yeah, I'm pretty sure Harbaugh over there, you know, is trying to do his best to try to get him to change that and get him out of that, you know, like give him that probably that college mentality that he still has. Well, again, if you look at all, all great running quarterbacks at some point, they just sustain a, a serious injury. Because they run too much, they because they run a lot, and Lamar is on that path. For as much as he run and as much as risk as he's taking, he's on that path to getting yeah. hurt. I do definitely see. Yeah, that, that it's going to be a leg injury, a leg or some foot injury. That's probably going to happen. He's going to mm-hmm. run. Somebody's going to grab him by the leg, twist it, or roll up on it. Something. I mean, I don't want it to happen, but I do see it happening. Yep. Next game. Bolt at the Titans. Bolts, unfortunately, still having some bad luck. Um, starting out zero and three, um, putting up some good fights against some of these te- against all three teams that they've had. But unfortunately, coming out with a loss, Tennessee looking like the Tennessee Titans. People expect them to be Ryan Tannehill had a pretty good game with three touchdowns. Derrick Henry finally getting the ball rolling with one hundred and thirteen yards rushing. Um, Tennessee really bouncing back from their Week One loss and. Taking the win they had last week. Actually, can't really say week one loss. It was kind of a week one embarrassing. Um, but they're kind of bouncing back and trying to take control of, in my opinion, a pretty weak um, AFC South division. They really need to. And um, great win by great win by the Titans. Great showing by Tannehill. Derrick Henry, like and I see, you know, that similar style coming back. So... I agree as much and more. Yeah, hopefully Titans can keep that roll going, and hopefully the Colts can get their uh, team turned around here too. They've had a lot of close couple games though, last couple weeks. So well, it all, it's, it's coming together, I think. It all it all has to be based on Carson Wentz, and unfortunately, he's been hurt. He's been battling injuries. You know, it's it's he's a man that's had the most unfortunate career that I can honestly say being. You know, starting with his MVP season, unfortunately being shortened by an injury to watch your backup quarterback win the Super Bowl for you. So then everyone gives him the credit than you. Right. And then just never staying healthy and, you know, Philadelphia not wanting to roll with them anymore. And then thankfully finding a home in Indianapolis. Uh, but unfortunately, again, just still battling some injuries. Oh. I still say that season, though. Know, I still consider that a joint quarterback effort season. Wentz, you know, carry most, carry, you know, you through the whole regular season. And then, you know, Foles came in, playoff, Super Bowl. You know, you got to give it to, you know, both guys in a way, but definitely more toward Wentz, you know, getting the team to there. And, yes, Foles picking up those reins and taking them all the way. The bit, And that's a big what if conversation that everyone can have the the history of time is what if Carson Wentz was still healthy would they have made the Super Bowl still they have still won it who knows we're gonna bounce the next game into a game that was really really good a big surprise for some people maybe not for Chargers fans 
But a big surprise around the NFL with the Chiefs losing another game, 30 to 24 against the Chiefs, dropping the Chiefs now to one and two. First time you know, since Patrick Mahomes took over as quarterback. Have they been under 500? Um, honestly, it was a great game, and the Chiefs had some costly fumbles by uh, Clyde Edwards Lair. Uh, Patrick Mahomes doing what he can, obviously. Tyree Kill having a decent game, still need to get involved, like I said. But I think the biggest factor in this game was the play of Justin Herbert. Definitely the former Oregon Duck, you know, came and pretty much said, you know, yeah, we're going into tough territory. I can handle it. And I believe he did um, handle it very well. Absolutely. Just a great, great win for the Chargers. That, you know, facing a former Super Bowl winning team. You know that is that is huge that's a big big confidence booster oh yeah you know especially in the division of the AFC West with everyone already looking at the Chiefs and it's kind of everyone's always talked about well who's second place who's the second best team and honestly you never know what could happen um, big big prayers for Andy Reid uh, he was quoted to be sick after the game thankfully he's doing better now um, you know, you'd hate to see anyone become ill or anything like that. Like I said, injuries, illnesses, and stuff like that. So Chiefs really need to figure out, uh, figure something out. Um, I don't want to say it's in panic mode um, because as long as Patrick is still – Mahomes is still there, you're, uh, you're still good. But then unfortunately, this could be a factor of some Super Bowl hangover where they lost in the Super Bowl and it's kind of hurting them. Right now, uh, they need to kind of get over whatever ba demons they're battling and figure it, and figure it back out and get back to that dominant faction that they were before. Agreed. And, yeah, quick recovery for Andrew Reed, which I believe they said it was just dehydration. So, but still, hopefully he gets back soon. Mm -hmm. Help that team. Next game, Saints. We're going to touch down every quarter and came out with a win 28-13 against the Patriots. Patriots struggling a little bit with uh, Mac Jones, the rookie quarterback. Um, obviously trying to get his feet, you know, feet wet and everything like that. Had a pretty decent game, um, but the Saints continuing on with, you know, Winston having a two touchdown game, um, bouncing back from their kind of upsetting performance of Week Two. You know, the Saints are a very gifted team. Um, it's hard to say, you know. I, I I don't view this game as a big like Saints are more dominant than the Patriots. I think the Patriots still learning. Obviously, Bill Belichick is a you know great coach. He's going to get that team rolling within the within this year, if not next year. And the Saints still gifted with all the talent they have. Jameis Winston is gifted, very good program. Um, after the retirement of Drew Brees, um. I feel like Alvin Kamara is doing good with not pushing him too much. I know we've said before that there was going to be a lot more um, relying on Kamara for this season, but he hasn't really done that yet, which is nice that they're winning without jeopardizing his health. Right. And as you can see, you know, Mac Jones threw uh, 51 attempts there. So it seems like they actually just abandoned the running game. Looks like it. So, hopefully, yeah, they can get that running game out there to help Mac Jones, you know, set him up for those passes that, you know, that he needs to be ready for and, you know, get those scores going and get that team down the field. So, I th I'm pretty sure the Patriots will bounce back. The Saints need to bounce back after this, after they got whooped last week by, uh, I believe it was Carolina that mm -hmm. they played. So, definitely, you know, a great bounce back game for the Saints. I'm pretty sure Patriots will bounce back. On to our next game. I'd say it was a pretty even match game for both teams. Um, even though I was expecting Giants to actually win this one. But unfortunately, the Falcons actually pulled it out. Surprisingly, that the Falcons can win. I mean, it's hard to <laughs> it's kinda hard nowadays. I think the biggest factor comes down to Matt Ryan. I mean reality um the giants are still very young let's say daniel jones saquon is still very young unfortunately injuries that have plagued him 
the Falcons were needing that win um, and hungry for that win. I think people really just pushed them aside to being one of the worst teams in the NFL. I think they're trying their best to make it so that they're not looked that way and still fighting hard. So great win for the Falcons. Um, Giants, unfortunately, starting 0-3, but they're so close to that victory. It's going to happen within the week or so. So keep an eye on watching the Giants win. And uh, Falcons, great job. Can you bounce? Can you continue this is the big thing, or is this a Jaguar 1-17 in 17 season? No, whatever you want to say. I don't, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, um, great performance by the Falcons. Great win and a very good game. Very good. Hopefully, you know, yeah, the Giants don't try to, you know, tank the season. I don't want to see that, especially in that division that they're in. But we'll see the way with the Dallas, way Dallas is rolling right now. All right, next game. This was – what's – so Bengals come out with a win, twenty four to ten. What is going on in Steeler country? Unfortunately, injuries are plaguing them really badly right now. Um, sorry. <laughs> ah, here um, I was reading why I was wondering why I was reading. Byron Murphy caught a glimpse of JJ Watt for a sec there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> not much you can really say on this game, to be honest. Um, because Steelers are just playing with so much injuries right now, uh, with uh, T.J. Watt being out now, and then Deontay Washington as well. Um, and frankly, this is a sign that Big Ben is done. Like, I think he needs to step down or retire. I, you know, Bengals a very young team, so you're looking at experience versus youth, and youth kind of took the game on this one if you really think about it. Joe Burrow coming out uh, with three touchdowns. Great win for him. He's kind of his, this is kind of his rookie, a continuation of his rookie year with him being out last year. But like I said, I think uh, I view this game as more as Big Ben. You need to retire, my man. You know, you're done. Like, what more can you, what more do you have to prove? You're a two time Super Bowl champion and, you know, Steelers, pretty much all time quarterback. So. Send your ass off. I mean, I think this is one thing we talked about, you know, our predictions for the season, you know, how long would Bed, Big Ben last? Well, it's been three games now. Oh, did we see him here one more time? Or I think uh, we see somebody like Mason Rudolph taking over here real soon. Mason Rudolph, I'm going to bring cell after last year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that with the Steelers. So, but yeah. Next up, Cardinals at the Jags. Speaking of taking the season for someone, Jags still not able to get the win for Trevor Lawrence, still going 0-3. It's amazing. He has an amazing college career, and he's 0-3 right now in his NFL career. That's what you get for tanking. You know, my, my, my point to be on that. Um, at one point, the Jaguars were winning this game, and then the Cardinals showing what they do. I think the Cardinals need to be careful. There's a lot of hype about them because of their high-powered offense. And in my opinion, I've said this point sometimes before, Tyler's getting lucky. Tyler's getting very lucky, and it's going to bite him in the ass here very, very soon. Agreed. Um, and you've heard us already talk about, much about Jason uh, – or I don't know why I keep doing that. Urban Myers and Trevor Lawrence. I don't think I need to bring it up again that those two still need to figure it out. With what's the organization on, just so. needs to figure it out. Like, organization needs to figure it out. And uh, I don't have any high hope because uh, maybe a little bit better than did my man Gardner Murray dirty. <laughs> you deserve it. I know. It's kind of making me wonder now if Lauren should have probably, you know, that, you know, for at least a few games watching, learning under some veteran leadership right now of some either Gardner Minshew or, you know, Jags bringing in some veteran quarterback from free agency, you know, just to watch and learn. You could have. You could have brought in a Joe Flacco. You could have brought in an Andy Dalton. You could have brought in so many quarterbacks, veteran leadership quarterbacks, and let someone, let Trevor work under that for a while. 
this is kind of the problem when you when you tank a season for that franchise quarterback. How many times has that actually worked out in their favor? You know, right off the bat, it's kind of hard. So what you're doing is that the more that this team is struggling, the more the doubt is happening for Trevor Lawrence. And it's like, well, this dude had an amazing college career. He's one of the highly recruited, you know, kids out of high school and top-ranked player all throughout college. Right now he's 0-3, and they haven't even had a close game at all. Is it, you know, is it a, you know, is it too early to say maybe bust? Yes, obviously, because it's he's only played three games. They haven't done much to really help him, right? And they didn't do much to help him in this in the off season. Exactly. I mean, you got to give you know your team weapons to work with, and unfortunately, the Jags haven't done that. No. So nope. Anyway, enough about that. On to Jets at Broncos, which. I don't think we need to say much about this game, even though... I've said it since day one. What have I always said about the Jets? What have I always said about the Jets? That they suck. They're trash. <laughs> what more do I got to say? You got shut out as a professional sports team. You got shut out. And, you know, I know baseball, you can have shutouts. Hockey, you can have shutouts. This is goddamn football, all right? You get shut out in football, it's a joke. Uh, especially professional football. Broncos aren't that... <laughs> Broncos are good, but they're not that good to shut your ass out 26 nothing. Exactly, I mean... So, frankly, in my opinion, I I could say... I could I have a positive view on every team that's lost so far, as much as I can, but let's be real. Jets, you suck. <laughs> and you know what? If Jets fans want to come at me, guess what? I don't care. Come at me. <laughs> Yeah, Mike Greenberg might come at you. <laughs> J-E-T-S, suck, suck, suck. There you go. I, mean, yes, I, would, I would say, you know, as I had mentioned before, even in our prediction here, you know, I didn't think Teddy Bridger would go. I'm not going to put this on him in this big win. It was just an overall performance by the whole Broncos team. Playing a weak Jets team. So, I mean, yeah. That's just, there's no more to say. Just... Good job, Broncos. You're up 3-0, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's gonna your undefeated streak's gonna last long. Oh, and still credit to the Broncos for the big win, everything like that. Jets, you might go, you might go over. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you're looking like a two win be... team. You're looking like a two win team right here. Guess what? You're going for the number one pick this year. Start looking at the college. Start looking at the college recruits. You're mean, looking at that number one draft pick there. I mean, they are going for something in history. You know, the first team to go 0 and 17 the new season. You know, looking so, like it. Looking but... like uh. Oh, you took Zach Wilson at number two. Hmm. You know, you had Trey Lance and uh, some other good picks there, and you decided to go with Zach Wilson. How's that working out for you there, Jets? Anyway, they need to get figure out, obviously, a new head coach. Oh, they you need know. Jesus is so, what they need. <laughs> Jesus. They need Jesus. You can, Jags, you, Jags are looking bit way better than Yeah, this. Let's, be re- <laughs> let's, be re- let's be real right now, folks. If we're going to say anything the Jets need, they need Jesus. <laughs> Next up, uh, very good game. Very, 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 very good, good game. game. Yes. Um, the kind of a actual rough start for the Raiders going down fourteen to two, but then coming back to win an overtime, second overtime win of the year to go three and zero, going beating the Miami Dolphins thirty one twenty eight. Who did not have Tua Tagovailoa with him going out with an injury from last week, Jacob. Kobe Brissett and jumping in the game, which is a very good quarterback. Um, but a great win by the Raiders. Uh, I guess the big question that I can ask you is, are the Raiders for real? You know, it's funny. I was actually going to ask you the same thing. I think the Raiders are for real. I, I think, think they are. I think like I we I think we said this last week. Gruden and Carr are out to prove everybody wrong. Mm-hmm. I think they're for real. Can they can they win the division? That's love for guys because you never know about them Chiefs. But I think they're a playoff team. I think they're hungry. I think they're out to prove something. And with them actually having, you know, we can say that, yes, last year they had their first full season in Las Vegas. But this is the season where they're actually having a fan base in Las Vegas. I think there's there's belief on that. There's Which, by the way, it's a beautiful stadium. Really beautiful stadium. Much would like to actually go see that stadium. I, absolutely. I actually have a family. My, uh, my mom's best friend, my Uncle Toon, he actually um, – I season tickets to the 
Um, I would love to go see it. But there's a lot of there's a lot of hope for this team. And, and I've always said this. I love John Gruden. He cracks me the hell up. <laughs> he's such an old school coach, and it's so freaking awesome. But he's got such an underrated team that they're playing at a high level. Brian Edwards, rookie receiver, playing out of his mind right now. Peyton Barber jumping in there for the injured Josh Jacobs. Having a great game. Derek Carr playing at a really good level. I will not say MVP. Don't ever ask me about MVP by week three. That's a – no. 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 You, you won't hear talk. me talk – you won't hear me talk MVP until week eight, all right? Yeah, at least halfway through the season. Yeah. So, anyway, great win by the Raiders. Getting that in overtime. Absolutely. I want – I really want to see them continue su- success, so. I do, too. I really love watching this team. I, I've always been a, kind of a Raider fan, and – so solidifying and like I said, man, <laughs> love me some John Gruden. All right, next up we have another very good game. You take away that first quarter where there was nothing really happening, in, but then it all of a sudden it blew up going in the next three quarters. This was actually a surprise um, mm-hmm. win to me from the Rams. That, I mean, I'm just saying that to me though. To me, I know you probably think differently, but I actually thought the Bucks would actually come in and get this. See, I knew this was going to be a great game. Um, this was a potential an NFC Championship game. Winner going to the Super Bowl kind of mentality. Matthew Stafford is enjoying his time right now and the LA Rams. Um, Brady having a pretty good game himself. You really think about it. Going for over 400 yards. I'm still, unfortunately, getting a loss. But the thing is, which by the way, I'm going to say this. I'm going to get out of the story because I see his name right there. Fuck Deshaun Jackson. Arrogant prick. <laughs> Run the end zone like, you, like you've done it before. Ass. <laughs> I'm a little hot right now. I've had a bad day at work. Um, it's all good. <laughs> but to me, it's not a big surprise because they're so equal. They're so equal in a sense of, yes. Exactly. Yes, Tom Brady and Matthew Stafford, there's no comparison. But everything else is so equal. And really, the Rams, I think, have the better defense than the Buccaneers do. You know, they have obviously two big names, Aaron Donald and uh, uh, Jalen Ramsey, but they've they've settled on so many good places. And I really, really, really love the coaching style, Sean McVay. He's a wonderful coach, very young, very energetic. And these two are going to meet again in the playoffs. I guarantee you they're going to meet in the playoffs again. And it could either be the same way, but here's the thing. This is Tom Brady we're talking about, too. He's going to take this loss and actually learn from it, gain from it, and it could be a different story. Rams, you are currently my pick right now to win the NFC West. There's not a lot stopping you. I don't see a lot of teams in the NFC West that's going to really stop the L.A. Rams. At this point, yeah. Uh, the way the way it's looking right now. They're well, playing out of their mind right now. They really are. God, they're good. Also, it didn't help in the Buccaneers game, you know, Gronk getting injured, having to... Well, Gronk got injured because that was a damn good spear, you know. That was, <laughs> I, not an actual spear in football terms, because that's a different terminology. Yes. But a great tackle. He just got knocked the fuck out. Let's be real. And I and again, I'm swearing a lot more. I apologize. But he got knocked out. Like... He got hit good. It wasn't. I don't want to hear no just dirty right talk. Ribbit, I don't want to right talk. It was like, oh, it was a dirty hit. All that. He got hit like a football player should. All right. It was. There's no helmet to helmet. There nothing. was no. No nothing. Quit, that. quit. Just, you know, lay hit. off the drink in there, Gronkowski's. Lay off the wee. <laughs> you know. Take a hit. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you don't see very many guys, you know, hitting Gronk that hard and, you know, actually injuring. Him to where he has to leave the game. But... Hey, Seattle, maybe learn from how to tackle like that because that's actually that was an actual wrap up tackle. All right, another very good game for our Sunday night uh, football. Green Bay beating the 49ers. Another game that could potentially looked at as a future um, NFC Championship game. Um, the Niners and the Packers two years ago actually was the NFC Championship game. Actually. Two years ago when the Niners had won it and went to the Super Bowl. Great game overall. Wonderful teams going at each other. Um, going into the last minute, a few drives. The Niners uh, getting that score to go up 
20, uh, 28, 27. Unfortunately, though, just like you never give Tom that time, you never give Aaron that time. Literally three seconds. plays, literally three plays into field goal range, got the win. What a wonderful game. Uh, Packers are bouncing back after their very upsetting, disappointing loss in week one. Looking like the Packers that we used to, this was the game that we expected. I think Jimmy Garoppolo deserves, deserves a lot of credit because he's he's out there to play for something. He doesn't want people to look past him and and continue to wonder when's Trey Lance's turn, when are they going to put him in. This is still Jimmy Garoppolo's team. What a wonderful team. I hope they stay healthy. They have the unfortunate running back problems. But if they can stay healthy, this team is going to bounce back. And I think they are going to bounce back from this loss. This is not a disappointing loss. This is a, a good loss for them. Also, Trey Lance gained his first rushing touchdown of the season in this game as well. Absolutely. Um, do you think Aaron Rodgers, especially now that after these last two games now, was on a mission this year to prove how great he is? I don't think he needs to prove how great he is. I just think that he's. This is more of a wake up call for the Packers of why they need him. Now, there is more for Aaron to do. He only has one Super Bowl win. Um, but Aaron doesn't really need to prove anything, in my opinion, of how good he is. I think he's just tr- reminding everybody how good he is. I think he's reminding everybody, including the organization where he might leave, you know, the Packers. But he's showing everybody why. Why he's looked at as one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And unfortunately, the path may come down to the same path that Brett Favre took and leaving to go play for other teams. Um, it'd be a sad day in Packers Packers history if Aaron Rodgers did that and he, both him and Favre went out the same way. But uh, again, I don't, uh, to answer your question, I don't think it's a matter of, uh, you know, on a mission for anything except for showing the world why he's still the the best. All right, and I, I honestly, I hope Aaron doesn't go that way. I hope he doesn't have, uh, you know, leave the organization, go play for another organization. I would like to actually see him play and retire his whole career here, whether it's this year or next year or whenever he decides. I think he needs to stay there, in there, for his career and you know just even if it is you know like i said this year maybe next year who knows anyway great game and like you said yeah 49ers will definitely bounce back especially with who they probably play with who they play next week yep uh going into my neck and the end of the week how about them cowboys whooping on some <laughs> oh, eagles man 41 21 um, Dak Dak Prescott returning home to the stadium where know, he got injured I, in last year. I told you, man. That if Dak's healthy. This team is good. This team's out for something. I'm not a Cowboys fan. Don't don't ever look at me and tell me I'm a Cowboys fan. <laughs> no, no. But it's a good story for Dak Prescott. It is a good story for him. The Eagles fought very hard. Jalen Hurts had a pretty decent game himself. He's still learning. This is his first full season. He's going to bounce back from this. Ezekiel Elliott decided he wanted to come out and play football finally. Great win by the Cowboys. Great win. We watched uh, we watched that game and everything like that. And defense, I think the biggest thing from this game was the defense just was out to, to fight. They were out to fight. Um, Diggs had a great game. I Diggs had a great game with a pick six. Um you know, this is still not only are the not only are the Cowboys looking to take the division. You know, the biggest thing I'm taking away from this is they're not only looking to take the take back the division that is rightfully theirs, but they're trying to keep Mike McCarthy to, from getting fired. He's on his way out, and if they continue to win, you're probably looking at him staying. So great win by the Cowboys. Eagles will bounce back. Um, Cowboys, I can see continue to roll. Now, one thing I think I did, I ask you this. Did this game against the Cowboys show how young the Eagles are? Yes. Yes. Um, and not in a bad way, but... No, not in a bad way. But in a good way because there was still a lot that they need to learn, but there's still a lot, but there's so much potential there. 
that once they get it all figured out, they're going to be good. We got Jalen Hurts and um, I forget his first name, but Smith. Devon. Uh, is... Devon. Is it Devon? It's like Devont. Devonta Devante, or something. Devonte. Devonte De... Smith or something like that. You know, I think, and I believe we said this too, you know, those two, they're going to be together. They are going to work well together. They did it well. In, they did very good in college. I think they will do definitely well here as well. You mm-hmm. know, having the chemistry that those guys have that, you know, you can't say, you really, hold me, tell me if I'm wrong or not, but you cannot really say, you know, a quarterback and wide receiver in college, you know, get to play, they always get to play together in the NFL. It doesn't happen very nope. much. It rarely happens. But for that to, for, <laughs> for these two for, to have that happen is a great thing. It is a great thing. It looks for a bright future if they continue to have that same chemistry like before, like Kelly said. Um, so, not much more we can speak on that. Um, if you guys remember from last week, we did our picks, um, counting them up. Kelly had 11 right, and I have 10. So, based off of weeks one, uh, weeks uh, last week and this week, Kelly is up 21 to 19 on picks right now. So. I'm glad you're keeping track of that because I have. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, so for I guess we'll go and do my little segment, get it out of the way. Um, I would have to say my shock of the week for this week would be the Chargers beating the Chiefs. I mean, playing at the Chiefs is always tough. Um, I I just yeah I did not I was very surprised you know with Herbert coming in and did what he did there. And Mike Williams as well, you know, putting up, you know, seven catcher, 122 yards. That is my shock of the week. The other one was very close, was the Buccaneers, uh, Raider, and Rams. But, no, I decided, no, it is definitely the Chargers and Chiefs. I like that. Um, we're going to take a look at the next week's schedule. And we're going to do another our segment of uh, picks right now. So... Starting with Thursday Night Football, battle of two form of the past two years, number one uh, draft picks, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to go ahead and say that Bengals are going to win. All right, Jags, going to get nothing for me. Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to give, you know, Jacksonville the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not seeing it yet, especially against the Bengals. I pick Bengals. We're going to bounce the uh, second game, first game of the morning on Sunday. We have the Washington football team heading down to Atlanta to place the Falcons. I think the Falcons are going to ride high, and they're going to con- they're going to want to continue that win streak, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to lose a close game to the football team. <laughs> to the football team. Yeah. I know. They need to get an egg figured out. Anyway, um, I am going to go with Washington as well. I think, you know, they are – I think they're a sleeper team. I think they're going to sneak in without nobody really realizing it. So, yeah, give me Washington over Atlanta. All right, we're going to go with Buffalo at Houston – or Houston at Buffalo. Um, And on this, we're going to go with Buffalo. (laughs) Excuse me. I would say, you know, if Tyrod Taylor was actually still quarterback, it might be a little different, but I'm going to go with Buffalo to Will as well. Buffalo, you know, at home. They're on a roll right now. Buffalo. All right, we're going to go with Detroit Lions at Chicago Bears. I'm going to go with a surprise pick. I'm going to say Detroit. I don't think that the Bears are going to be ready yet for this. I think Detroit's going to sneak out a win. I think so as well. I think this is going to be... Uh, Jared Goff's first win for the Detroit Lions. Also, I don't know if you saw it either. Um, Detroit let go of one of their linebackers today. They're trying to get him away in the trade, but couldn't do it. But they let him go. So, yep. um, forgot to say that earlier. But yeah, Detroit over Chicago. All right. Um, also, Jacksonville also traded away C.J. Henderson. Really? Yeah. Um, speaking of Carolina, we had the Panthers. Going to Dallas. Um, oh, man. As much as I would love to see Carolina win, matter of Christian McCaffrey's health, but I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, and I also think, you know, 
this will be the tough, the first real tough game for Sam Darnold against a really great defense after that game that they just had. So yeah, I think do Dak, do Dak, see if you can get it going. Dallas over Carolina. All right, we're gonna go Indianapolis at Miami. This one's kind of a tough one. I am gonna say Indy sneaks out a win. All right. Um, I actually don't see him sinking out a win. I actually think Miami's actually gonna get this one this time. I think they. I think they're still trying to figure. Uh, I know Tua. They said he's actually they actually placed him on IR. So you know they gotta go with for sec. So. I think that uh, Miami's actually going to get this one. See, I thought you were just copying everything. I thought I was doing what if I keep the lead going. <laughs> um, next game, we have Cleveland going to Minnesota. Minnesota riding high after beating the Seahawks, but I don't think it's enough. I think Cleveland's a much better team. Give me the Browns to kind of a close game, but I do see the, the Browns taking it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Coke's supposed to be back this week or not. But, yeah, the way the Browns are rolling right now, especially with Odell back and back, give me the Browns over the Vikings. All right, we're going to battle the New York Giants versus the Houdat Nation of the Saints. Um, you know what? The Giants can continue to fight hard, but Saints. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I got to go with the Saints as well. You know, just... <laughs> I don't know. I've been trying to give New York, also, you know, the benefit of the doubt, but I'm just not quite seeing it myself yet. But, I mean, I hope I'm actually wrong about this game because I can actually see it kind of going either way. But I am actually going to roll with the same this one. And the next game we're going to talk about, a game we never will see going either way, it's the Tennessee Titans versus the New York Trash Jets. Tennessee, done. Next game. I don't even need to make my pick. Y'all know what I'm going to say. Titans. I hope Derrick Henry has a record day on you. It could happen. I'm pretty sure there could be a Jets fan. Dogging the entire time. You fat fucking dog on my jet. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so we got the Kansas City Chiefs going to the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this is a bounce back win. I think it's still going to be a game where the Kansas City, where the Chiefs do need to bounce back. I do see them coming out on top. I think the Eagles are going to continue to fight. I make it a close game, but I think we see Patrick Mahomes look like Mahomes. Up. Yeah, definitely got two teams that, you know, looking for a bounce back after tough losses. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, give me, give me KC over Philly. All right, next we have the Arizona Cardinals at Los Angeles Rams. This could be a potential game of the week. I'm sorry. I know that my family in Arizona is going to be mad that I'm not going to pick them. I don't feel very confident in the team. I have way more confidence in the Rams taking this game. Me, Aaron Donald, and the boys. Agreed. I actually think this might be the game where we see Kyler Murray not actually not do as well. So I am actually going to go with the Rams over Arizona. This is going to be a tough one for me. Seattle at San Francisco. I know I would always love to pick my Seattle Seahawks, but last two weeks have shown me that they are going to have a hard time. I think San Francisco takes the win. And Seattle always has a struggle going into San Fran or Santa Clara, if you really want to be real. Yeah. Um, but give me the Niners over the Seahawks. I hope I'm wrong. Always hope I'm wrong because I love my Hawks, but real. You know, it's always a tough game when Seattle goes to San Francisco and when they always come to Seattle as well. I mean, it's a rivalry game between these two. But, you know, I'm actually I'm going to go with the opposite. I think, actually, Seattle is going to get the win here. Um, I really do. I, have a, I went with my gut feeling last week when they played the Vikings and picked the Vikings, but I'm going with my gut this week, and I have a feeling that Seattle is actually going to get the one, the W here. I can only say that because I gave them a hard time about not trusting the Seahawks last week. <laughs> All right, we're going to go with the Baltimore Ravens at the Denver Broncos. Lamar Jackson takes the high that he is doing. I think he comes out on top in another close one. I think this one definitely will be more closer of a game. Um, also, you got Bridgewater going off of probably his uh, first really tough defense as well. 
And I think, yeah, if Lamar isn't trying to do like what he just tried to do this last game, as in, you know, so many incomplete passes and trying to force the ball, but they got this one. So give me Baltimore over Denver. Fun fact to everyone, I believe uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Lamar Jackson were actually teammates. They were, or one of them was the successor of the other in Louisville. Next game, we have the Packers hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, the way the Pittsburgh's been going, you know, it's just, it's kind of sad to see. Um, but, I mean, I picked, I think I've actually picked Pittsburgh twice and I was wrong. And so, I'm sorry, I'm Green Bay, especially the way Green Bay has been on a roll these last two games. Green Bay over Pittsburgh. I didn't realize we're going to have this Sunday night football game. What a what a magical game this is going to be. I hope everyone tunes in to watch this. It's going to be an emotional game. Tom Brady's first return to Foxborough to face the New England Patriots. As much as it's going to be heartwarming to see Tom Brady back in Foxborough where he's won some, you know, once uh, six championships and solidified himself as an all-time great quarterback, Foxborough. I mean, this is actually Tom Frey's chance to actually be the first quarterback to beat all 32 teams. Absolutely. I do think he actually assists against his former coach. Sorry, Mac Jones. You're about to get showed up by one of the great ones. Did, did Peyton win against all 32 teams? Did he ever play the Colts? That's a question. I hadn't, I hadn't, no, he played against Andrew Luck. Did, did they win? I will have to look, look that up. up. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. That's a good question because I thought the thing that I saw is, yeah, Tom Brady, would, for on the list of accomplishments Tom Brady would make this year, would be the first quarterback to actually beat all 32 teams. I could be wrong, but I definitely, I know Peyton has played against the Colts. Um, so, hmm. Okay. He would not be the first. He'll be in the list of, of quarterbacks that have done it. Okay. Okay. So there's been more. Okay. I thought, okay. Then I just read the thing. There'll be three. There's already three. Okay. Go ahead and tell us real quick. So people. Peyton Manning is one of them. Okay. Drew Breezies. Really? Well, I guess that's true because he was a charger and then, yeah, he came over. And of course, my man. Right, Favre. That's good company. So, as of right now, um, and there could be more, honestly. Actually, no, there isn't. Those three quarterbacks are the only two, only the only three quarterbacks to have actually beaten all 32 teams. Tom Brady does it this year. He joins the list. And honestly, you're looking at four of the best quarterbacks of all time. Right, all <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Looking at all four of the best quarterbacks of all time. Let's just be wrong. Right. Um, so now we're going to jump into Monday Night Football, which is probably, in my opinion, the game of the week. Las Vegas Raiders versus the Los Angeles Chargers. What a game this is going to be for the AFC lead at this point, AFC West lead at this point. A game that either t- that both teams need to win. This is a hard one because I love Gruden <laughs> and I love Herbert because he's a duck. Yeah, but I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, I'm having a tough time too. I'm like, I like both as well, but I, I'm gonna go with my gut feeling and basically just what they just did to a a team. I'm gonna go with the Chargers. I think they're gonna take that big win, and that's gonna help them win this game. It, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go against you. I'm, 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 I'm only doing this because I want to go against you. Okay. And but I have a good reason as well. I think the coaching experience. The coaching experience is going to play in the big factor here. Damn it, I want to see Herbert win the next matchup. You owe me this, Herbert. I'm going to go with the Raiders to win this game. Honestly, I will be happy with whichever team wins, but i got to make a pick, so yeah. I think This is a game I'm actually really wanting to watch. It's going to be an amazing game, I think. Um, like I said, it's two teams that you wouldn't expect to be battling for the AFC West spots right now. But uh, damn it, I really want to go with the Chargers, but I have this funny feeling Gruden is going to pull – Something out of his ass again, and <laughs> damn it, Gruden, you got me. Also, right. if you really want to watch a funny com- comedian, comedian uh, Frank Caliendo does an amazing, oh God, yes. amazing uh, Gruden um, impression. It's amazing. 
So we're going to go to the last segment of the night, and it's going to be the Lionel Buckets of Champions. I picked two players, one from offense, one from defense, on who had the better game and who had a better game to so help solidify their teams to a victory. Uh, for defense, I'll start with defense. I got to go with Miles Garrett. Four and a half sacks, which is the uh, um, franchise record. Franchise yeah, record. Um, for the Browns. For the Browns. What an amazing performance. He really got in the pocket. He really tore up that that um, Brown, or Bears offensive line. Made Justin Fields run for his life. I got to give him the credit on that. And offensively, Kelly has said a lot about it today, uh, tonight. I got to give it to Justin Herbert, not because he's a duck, but because of his performance was the reason why they beat the char- the Chargers, beat the Chiefs. Got to go for him. He had an amazing game. I could have gone with uh, Madison. He was a very close second. Um, but uh, like I said, my, my picks of the week is going to be Herbert and Miles Garrett. Great picks. I mean, I don't see – I can't think of anybody who probably did better than those two on both sides. Yeah. Um, as always, everybody, thank you for watching this. Thank you for being here. If anybody's actually here lurking as we stream this, obviously nobody had any, uh, doesn't look like anybody has any questions for us for tonight, but we will, as always, load this up on YouTube. So leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe. Thank you all very much. It is after midnight here, our time. We got both. He had a long day at work today. I have a long day tomorrow, so we want to get to bed. So thank you all for being here. And as always, all game.